The first thing we always want to do when we're looking at a specimen is to identify what species we're looking at, what part of the body we're looking at, and what perspective we have of that body part. So just looking at what we've got in front of us right now, we can see a pelvis with a defined obturator foramen. We can see a femur. We can see a patella. We can see a sesamoid bone of the gastrocnemius. We can see a tibia. We can see a fibula. Now notice, notice how that fibula as we had distally vanishes out of sight. That's going to suggest that we're looking from the lateral perspective because the fibula is going to bend medially. And because it bends medially, the distal aspect would be out of sight from the lateral perspective. Even more distally, we have the tarsus, we have our metatarsals, and we have our phalanges. The multiple phalanges suggest that we're working with some sort of carnivore, either a dog or a cat, but we're definitely not working with a horse as we'd only have one, and we're not working with a cow because we'd have two. So that establishes that we are working with some sort of dog or cat, we're looking at a pelvic limb, and we know that we're looking at it from the lateral aspect. Again, take a look at that fibula compared to the tibia. Today we want to look at blood supply, and this is just going to be primary blood supply. It's by, all, by no means all the blood supply, but we're going to start off by producing a very thick abdominal aorta. And this abdominal aorta is a direct line from the aorta coming off the heart. We've just entered into the abdominal cavity and we're heading towards the pelvis. We have a blood supply here and this is this thick abdominal aorta that I'm making here. And we're going to get a branch that comes off. And this branch that's going to come off is the internal iliac artery. And this internal iliac artery is going to head caudally. And it's going to head caudally here. And it's going to go all the way, and then it's going to come down, and I'm going to have these little dots here. Now, it's important to note that I'm making these little branches. There's more branches that are coming off. And we just had two changes, although I didn't say it. Here's the abdominal aorta. Here was our internal iliac artery. And very quickly, we get a branch of the caudal gluteal artery. And this caudal gluteal artery is going to be important for blood supply of kind of the, the rump of the animal, right? And so this is that major blood supply, that caudal gluteal artery. But there's another artery that we're concerned about, and it's the cranial gluteal artery. And the cranial gluteal artery actually branches off the caudal gluteal artery. The cranial gluteal is really easy to identify because it's located between the middle and deep gluteal muscles. It also has a cranial gluteal nerve that's located near it, and that's what I just drew in green. So you can use those multiple things. Is it located between the middle and deep gluteal muscles? And it's probably the cranial gluteal artery. Do you see a cranial gluteal nerve running near it? That's probably the cranial gluteal artery. And this this is tricky to some people. So this is right here, that caudal gluteal artery. The caudal gluteal artery continues. It goes into the pelvic canal. These little dots indicate, again, that they, we are in the, that we are within the pelvic canal. We are behind the bone that we are looking at. And then it kind of a branch pops out and it branches out and sends these little things. So that's it. That's what you care about when it comes to the internal iliac. The internal iliac produces the caudal gluteal artery and the caudal gluteal artery has a branch that's the cranial gluteal artery, and it's located between the deep and the middle gluteal muscles. But back here where the abdominal aorta was, and we have that branch that becomes the external iliac, we have another branch, and this is our external iliac artery. And excuse me if I just said, I, it might've, I might've made a mistake there and said internal, or external iliac, when I meant internal. This is your internal iliac artery. This new one that I'm drawing is our external iliac artery. And our external iliac artery is gonna come down and it's gonna branch into two branches. It's gonna branch into a deep femoral artery and into a femoral artery. So I'm gonna make these two branches, but we're gonna follow the deep femoral artery first. So here's the deep femoral artery. And this is gonna kinda of come and it's gonna to head towards the femur and maybe we're gonna send up a branch into the obturator foramen, 
and we're going to send a branch this way and this way and maybe like another one kind of like this but that's the deep femoral well very quickly the deep femoral artery is going to become the medial circumflex femoral artery and that's really what this is here this branch that's wrapping around the femur this this branch is right here this is our medial circumflex femoral artery and our medial circumflex femoral artery can be identified because it actually goes between the quadriceps femoris muscle and the pectineus muscle and it actually will enter into the adductor muscle so look for those landmarks when you're identifying these vessels the femoral artery is going to head a little bit more distal and as it travels down the limb as it heads distally down the limb we're going to have a series of branches break off even before we leave the area of the femur so we're coming down here right and then we're going to have a branch that branches off right away and it's going to head and it's going to go see here we've got these dots again indicating that we're behind the bone and these this artery that I just drew off this femoral artery, that is our lateral circumflex artery. So again, the, up here, we had our external iliac artery. Our external iliac artery became the deep femoral artery. That deep femoral artery then flew and became the medial circumflex artery. And we can verify the medial circumflex artery because it goes between the quadricep femoris and the pectineus and enters the adductor. Well, the femoral artery emerges onto the pelvic limb in the femoral triangle and the femoral triangle can be identified by the caudal belly of the sartorius and the cranial belly of the pectineus and it's right in the middle there it's going to be alongside also the uh, femoral vein and there's going to be a femoral nerve in there so be wary of that be be aware that there you are know, these structures there that are going to help you identify that femoral artery the lateral circumflex femoral artery dives into quadriceps femoris and it's just going to dive right into quadriceps femoris and it's kind of important that you be aware of this because there's another artery which i'm not going to draw but it's the superficial circumflex femoral artery and that will dive into sartorius 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 is not the landmark that you want for identifying the lateral circumflex femoral artery you want quadriceps femoris so be wary of that if you're looking for lateral circumflex femoral artery you want quadriceps femoris as your target here we go this this artery is this femoral artery is still diving down we have that branch of that lateral circumflex femoral artery now we're going to have the proximal caudal femoral artery and the proximal caudal femoral artery is going to head across the femur. And this is deceptive for some people. Some people have a real hard time with this because this proximal sesamoid, this proximal femoral, this proximal caudal femoral artery is mid thigh. It's going to run over pectineus and adductor and it's going to enter the, the deep side of gracilis. So it is mid thigh and people look at it and they think oh it's too far distal it's got to be the middle maybe it's the most distal one but it's definitely not the proximal one it is the proximal one it's mid thigh we're going to have two more we're actually going to have a middle caudal femoral artery and a distal caudal femoral artery and they are really close to the most distal aspect of the femoral bone so so be aware of that now this femoral artery continues and suddenly we, we have the saphenous artery and the saphenous artery is a big artery that's going to come down and it's actually going to provide blood supply all the way down the limb and it's going to go both on the cranial and the caudal aspect it actually splits and it goes the saphenous artery right here it comes down and then it branches into a cranial branch cranial branch and a caudal branch a caudal branch right here okay so this saphenous artery is actually located just distal to the proximal the proximal caudal femoral artery which is right here then you have that saphenous artery 
keep in mind that proximal caudal femoral artery was only about halfway down the limb. It was a mid-thigh region. Saphenous artery. Then we're going to have the middle caudal femoral artery. It's going to come out. And that middle caudal femoral artery is going to be distal to the saphenous artery, but it's also going to insert into the distal adductor and semimembranosus. The caudal, that femoral artery, is then going to continue down even more. We're going to have a, just, just at the most last possible moment, we're going to have another branch that's going to branch off. And this branch is the distal caudal femoral artery. It's a, a larger vessel, just proximal to the popliteus, that behind the stifle that, that we always talk about. And that pro it's going to be just proximal to it. So it's really right at the end of the femur. And this larger vessel is often found underneath the medial head of gastroc. Well, when that femoral artery that we've been following with all of these branches gets right behind the stifle, we call it popliteal artery. Anything that's behind the pop, well, most things that are behind the stifle get the name popliteus, the popliteal. And this is no exception. You have a popliteal artery arising from the femoral artery. And so here it is. And then that popliteal artery, as soon as it leaves the stifle, is going to then become the cranial tibial artery. And that cranial tibial artery is going to come in, it's going to wrap around, and it's going to go behind our tibia. It's going to be on that medial side of the tibia. It's going to branch. And so you're going to have these two branches one of which is going to come down kind of like this, and then these, I should do that a little bit different because it's going to come down, it's going to wrap, and it's going to be on the medial aspect, and it's going to, it's going to head down this to the plantar region. Then we have our other branch of the cranial tibial. It's going to come down, it's going to meet up with that cranial branch of the saphenous, and it's going to supply blood to the dorsal aspect of the distal canine limb. That distal caudal femoral artery, like I said, it's a larger vessel. It's located proximal to the popliteal. It's often under the medial head. And that cranial tibial artery, that's going to be between the cranial tibial and the long digital extensor. So if you're actually looking for this artery on the distal aspect of the limb, what you want to do is you actually want to separate the cranial tibial and long digital extensor muscles, and you want to look at them, and uh, you'll see it just right there. It's a big artery sitting between them, heading distally. So this is a lot of information. I recommend you kind of listen to it over maybe another time. You'll notice I didn't write out the names of it. I would recommend that you write out the names of these arteries as we label them and uh, go through it a couple times and hopefully it makes sense for you. Thank you.